uh, Dave, another chilly one for you out there. Um, yeah, like we're, we're now we're days away. Um, I was listening to some Winnipeg radio today, and it's funny because because I know you guys had uh, Bomber on yesterday. It, I wouldn't say that they're oozing conflict. Like this is they're very cautious. They know that they're going to see a Saskatchewan team. Yeah, they beaten twice, but a Saskatchewan team that just seems to be coming in with that mojo. First of all, can I back things up for just a minute? I, I think I might be having some technical difficulties because when I joined in, did you say that your wife said you were too bright? Like I've heard her tell say that you're not too bright, but never <laughs> anyways. Just just wondering. Um, Colson no, really no, liked I, that one. <laughs> I'll be here for a while. I'm no, here you for know all I the get... dad jokes and all of Dave's Rider Game intros. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the same vibe in, in listening to the media interviews and kind of talking to people that I have this week is that there is some ca- cautious optimism is what I'll use as the, the descriptive word is the fact that you know, there's faith, there's confidence in the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and knowing what they've done, but as Luke Mullender put it so appropriately, it is hard to beat a team twice in a season, let alone three times in a season. And that's what the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have to accomplish here on Saturday should they want to get back to the Grey Cup. Uh, what caught uh, what caught your eye today? Anything, uh, you know, coming out of Ryderville? Well, good news on the defensive line. Brian Cox Jr. was taking full reps on the defensive end. Miles Brown continues to take reps on the defensive tackle spot despite wearing a brace on his shoulder pectoral area. Uh, C.J. Rivas was back on the field today. I was a little concerned when he didn't practice yesterday, but I think it was more of a maintenance day yesterday. So he was back practicing again with the defense. Offensively, it doesn't look like there's going to be any change to the offensive line in that Trevor Reed is likely going to miss the, le- the game, the left tackle, albeit him not in a brace or anything is a good sign. I just don't see a way in which he's going to play. So that would mean Trevon Tate moves to that left tackle spot. And then Logan Furland will start at right tackle and Peter Godber starts at center. So those are kind of the big ones that you're noticing right now, as we get closer to game time here on Saturday. Any special preps, Dave, with respect to the riders going into enemy territory? We know that Taylor field or mosaic stadium is super loud for opposing teams. I'm assuming that, the riders are they're in for the same for the same thing when when they head there yeah and the team is fully prepared for it if you come in off elphinstone you could hear the crowd noise from there today as they have got it absolutely cranked up a lot of people are actually bringing airpods and using the noise canceling feature on them just because it, it is that loud with what the riders are practicing and it's a complete role reversal from last week because last week the defense was practicing with the noise and this time around it's the offense and making sure they've got their silence cadence set up and also you can see that they they're making sure that they know the calls as the offensive linemen again are screaming at each other in their ear holes trying to make sure that each one knows what's supposed to be happening on each play. So the communication's a big key, and the writers have been doing a lot of work on it this week. And, and what about experience? I mean, we talk about, you know, this this Winnipeg team that's been to four straight Western, you know, finals, uh, hosting, actually, six straight Western finals. The writers, not so much. Uh, do they talk about experience with respect to uh, the writers as they, as they head in? There are some veteran guys that they definitely are leaning on. Jameer Thurman is one of them on the defensive side. They've looked to him all year to really set a tone. And and again, just have, having been one of those been there, done that guys. Micah Johnson also is a guy on the D-line that the team is looking to. And then you need to look no further on the offense than Trevor Harrison. And again, he is so dialed in, so focused right now in his preparation and just the way he is leading this team. And he's put them on his back for the most part. And again, whether it be through words, through the way that he's approaching the week, definitely Trevor Harris is a guy and the experience that is going to be leaned upon uh, by this group. A.J. Olet, of course, also has been there, done that a little more recently than Trevor Harris has. So he too knows what it takes to get back over that mountain and to the game, and he's looking forward to having an opportunity to do that in Winnipeg. And I have to ask you, uh, how are you feeling going in? Like this is, you know, this is your first playoff playoff experience too. Are you excited to to get there and, and get this get this going. 
I didn't sleep Friday night before the game here. <laughs> I'll be honest. I was like, oh my gosh. But uh, going back there is going to be interesting as I was fortunate enough to call games there with the University of Saskatchewan. So being at Princess Auto Stadium, as it's now known, was kind of a, a comfort zone, right? And the fact that I hated being there, you know, as a, a Saskatchewan <laughs> guy, but it also had that, you know, security blanket. Okay, I know what to expect. I know where the clock is. I know where everything that I need is. But this time around, it's going to be a totally different feel. That Labor Day rematch is the loudest stadium I have ever heard as I took my headphones off for a bit and just wanted to absorb what it was like. And that was a mistake because I had no idea what was going on. So I won't make that again, but it's going to be a lot of fun for sure. Uh, anything? So th the thing that I'm curious about, right, it's, it's just such a chess match. It's awesome. Just like last week on, you know, Friday when we talk about Armstead and Olette in the backfield and oh what are they going to do they're going to run and, and they don't run it as much as we think and they think and they game plan around it um, what do you are you seeing anything from from that without giving away anything to the opposition or the 204 numbers that are listening by any means um, are you seeing anything there are they, are they both getting probably the same amount of reps that they would have last week or anything Dave Actually, they wanted to mix it up. So they've got Logan Furland running the ball quite a bit oh, this week. Yeah, and, obviously. Uh, just yes, for the 204 yes, numbers. <laughs> and Micah Johnson no, you know is a fullback. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I do rep counts during practice. I, I probably am just drive myself nuts doing that. So to me, it would seem that the preparation is very much intact. We're not going to see a lot as far as the media goes. Tomorrow's day is a work day that's when the closed practice will happen and that's yeah. when the full install of the game plan will be revealed and we will get a chance to see that I, I would anticipate a healthy dose of everybody on the offense how's that for sitting on the fence political times my friends but uh, as far as the defense goes they look dialed in they look dialed in and ready to meet a challenge in three players in particular and Nick Dembski Kenny Lawler and of course Brady Oliveira who are the three keys and the three weapons that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have used to hurt the Riders and the rest of the league in weeks past so we'll see what that defense has got dialed up to try to combat all three of them you talked about it Craig right like um Mark Mueller like first year he's a Regina guy he's in there his grandpa like the whole the whole storyline as well like just to kind of put it in perspective and I know that we've talked about it before Dave is is this, this coaching staff this is their first year and and where we are with the positivity and we're going into Winnipeg Winnipeg you know it's this is winnable like what is it three and a half still the line so the smartest people out there that set gambling lines three and a half so it's not that I, I would think it would be I thought it would be more like two but three and a half but just this like I'd like to know what Mark Mueller's week is like what is he game planning what is he seeing because we talked about it too like with Winnipeg right okay they, maybe they're not going to run the ball as much but they're just going to dink and dunk dink and dunk and that's how Oliveira is going to get into the game or he has against us what are they doing on the other side to say, okay, well, the Riders are going to take that away now. Um, are, are we going to fire it deep down the sideline? Just that chess match, right? And, and yeah, it's not really, I guess this isn't really a question to you, but just the positivity with the coaching staff as well and a, and a guy like Mueller. I'll be quite frank because obviously my experience with professional, right, is is limited, right? Where I'm at game, what, 22 now? But in past in past teams that I've been around, the most successful teams have the most cohesion, whether that's in the dressing room between the players or whether that's in the coaches offices between the coaches. And I've been in some situations where it's absolutely toxic. Mm -hmm. The associate coach or the assistant coach, they don't work well together or whatever. Right. And you think that, well, geez, it's the coaches that assemble the team. Well, that's not always the instance, but this time around this group, genuinely cares about one another they enjoy spending time together and there's nothing worse than having been trapped at a stadium forever right so this group they work so well and feed off one another that i, I think that that's part of the success that Corey mace has gone ahead and instilled now there's so many other positives that you can draw upon and when you bring that conversation back to mark mueller the guy's been around the game forever right yeah. like you can see the pictures with him and his grandfather in hamilton right those are some of the greatest shots ever but never have I ever experienced with Mark a situation where 
it's become too big for him, the situation. And, and I go back to when he was playing football, right? Because, again, he's had the same expectations on him all the way up as being Ronnie Lancaster's grandson who happened to play the same position that he did. And there was never a moment that was too big for him, and he's combated it all the way through. So to me, he embraces that challenge. I think I, he, I've seen him grow as a coordinator in his play calling this season, and I'm excited for what he might have dialed up this week against Winnipeg. Uh, speaking of wives, smart Alec, um, what's yours saying about your uh, your hair? Because you know, like, and and the beard and and everything. Is she she digging it, or she's like, dude, you got to shave and cut that thing. Uh, I just say, all right, all right, all right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do kind of look like M- Matthew McConaughey if you squint. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, no. that's right. She does not want the – she's all for a haircut soon. <laughs> I love it. I was trying to think of who, who you look like, and I was like, there's a little bit of Huey Lewis there. Uh, the facial hair is throwing me off, though. So, um, yeah. It's uh, it's a thing of beauty. It's moving when you talk now. I love it. If you have people didn't catch That's it on Tuesday, <laughs> people didn't catch on Monday that Dave's superstitious. He's not cutting his hair. He's not doing anything until this ride uh, until this ride is done. So in, in Vancouver, hopefully we get to see full. And then Curtis said maybe we get some man bun action since you're going to Vancouver. Oh goodness, popular there. <laughs> well, you know, the other superstition I've I've gone ahead is I haven't bought my kid a tank of gas in over a month, so I'm going to try to keep that one going too. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That one's a little tough. All right, buddy. Uh, have a good one. Close practice tomorrow. Uh, we'll catch up and uh, and see how things go. All right, and uh, great to see Craig Adam where he belongs on camera. You look great, my friend. Hey. Thank you, buddy. There Appreciate it. Shine free. Shine free. Craig Adam. So it's uh, it's all good.